Content Gate. Do, 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 do. Hey, how's it going? This is your album sketch. So I wanted to show you how to do um, a little deep dive into some more brush making stuff, into some advanced brush making stuff. Um, so this is a little scumble brush. I use it for a little charcoal -y, but I use it as a brush to uh, make gesture drawings of silhouettes and things. So if I want to try to kind of flesh out a pose or something like that, what I'll do is I, I want something that's actually really loose, even if I'm doing a black and white comic and it's all going to be uh, line art. Actually, this is a great way to start because I'm thinking about form and I can think about the silhouette and I, I don't have to be perfect, right? You, like, you can see what I'm doing. You can see where I'm going. I can give him a funny top hat. Um, oh, now it's an Abe Lincoln silhouette. Um, but, uh, I, you know, and then during this process, I can decide, you know, like exactly the pose or even, you know, what kind of clothes and so on. Um, so this is a great brush to have in, in your arsenal. The harder you push, the darker it's going to get and it has a build up so you can kind of like a charcoal. Um, okay, so I wanted to show you how to make your own scumbly brush. And uh, the way it starts is pretty easy. So you just grab a square type of shape, um, maybe something up or down, maybe something uh, left or right. Um, so let's make like a little rectangle and we'll just go to edit fill with our black. Boink. Okay, so now we have a basic shape, but we need to mess it up. So make a little selection around it. And this is where filters are actually cool for making brushes. So go to distort and go to, uh, there's a bunch you can do that are great, but I like ripple. So you'll see when we get ripple, we can ripple it uh, and it sort of like messes up the edges, but you get sizes here. So you can do different kinds of ripples. So first start with a large one and basically do something like, uh, just give it, give it some, not all the way, but not too little, like, you know, mess it up a little bit. Boom. Now it's messed up. Now go to filter and then go to distort and then go to ripple. Okay. But this time you can see it's actually layering the effect. So it's getting more and more crazy. So this time let's go to medium. Let's give it a medium and let's mess it up. So let's tweak it out that way. Boom. See, now you can see we're getting something pretty interesting here. Okay. Filter again, distort. Ripple, you gotta guess what I'm doing at this point. So I'm just layering it in. We could go to a small one, but you can actually see that sort of fractures it into almost too much, uh, like a million, million pieces. Now let's do it. Boom. So now we have um, sort of like a cool, fuzzy edged blot. And a cool, fuzzy edged blot is a great place to start when you're making a fuzzy edged, uh, you know, fuzzy edged brush. So. All right, and then we need one more thing. So let's, that's one, and then another one. So let's make like a square-ish shape again. Same thing, we're gonna go fill it, and then we're gonna grab the, uh, I'm just boxing it so I don't screw up the other stuff. We're gonna grab an eraser, and I'm just gonna erase, your favorite eraser, whatever you like. I'm just gonna erase the edges away, okay? And there we go, and a little bit more, a little bit more. Okay, and what I'm trying to do is kind of just create a softening effect. So we don't have a, we definitely don't have a perfect rectangle anymore. Okay, I'm just gonna, so I have a square-ish shape now with a lot of distortion, a lot of sort of translucent parts as well as, you know, transparent parts. And I tend to like making brushes where I have a little bit of input on them. That is to say, like, I draw on them a little bit because then every time I make a brush, even if I make the same type of brush, like even if I make a scumble brush, it's actually going to be a different scumble brush. That's kind of a fun thing to do. So, all right. So I'm just, you can see I'm chipping away. I'm going to leave the core sort of dark and opaque and complete, but I'm sort of chipping the edge away, all right, to be sort of this interesting shape which is basically just something that starts dark and then gets more and more transparent okay done so now we have our two uh <coughs> brush presets we can make so let's make both of those so let's grab this one we'll go to edit uh define brush preset don't have to name it don't worry uh, i only name my tool presets my brush presets i don't really care about uh, and then this one edit Brush preset again, boom, got it. Okay, so now we have the two we need. 
to make the brush that we want to make. So default settings as always are no good. So first into your brush settings and we're going to make a bunch of tweaks to our brush settings and, our, and then we're going to go up to here and we're going to save it as a tool preset. And that's the best way to make brushes in Photoshop in my opinion. Always tool presets because it saves everything. It saves a brush tip and all these settings and it actually saves a great tool. So first things first, spacing. Uh, we don't know exactly what we're going to need right now, but let's put it somewhere around it in there. Okay, and then what we're going to do is a couple of cool things. So we can control the size here. Let's, we can put it down a little bit just so we can work with this. What I want to do is I want to create some randomness. So I'm going to do a little bit of angle jitter, maybe even a lot of angle bit jitter. We'll see. But I'm going to do a little bit of size jitter, right? And that's going to add a bunch of randomness. So you can already see we've got like a fuzzy Bernie brush. So that's cool. Okay, and then now I'm going to do a bunch of cool stuff. So one, texture. Grab any kind of texture you want. Um, some kind of rock texture or anything like that. It will, it will work pretty good. And then uh, turn the depth down such that you can see that texture starting to affect it, right? So now you can see, ah, it's drawing it and it's giving me a lot of grain like a grain pattern and if you change the texture you're working with it'll change that grain pattern and it, any of the default ones that look sort of stony will work um just turn the depth to a part where that it uh, that it makes sense and and sometimes you need to invert the image if the image doesn't make sense then just invert it um and then see if that works better okay so now we're getting texture with our brush okay and then <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to control this texture with my pen pressure. And that is a really cool thing to do because what will happen is as you push down, you'll get darker. But as you push up, you'll not only get lighter, you'll get like more tooth, almost like you're on paper or canvas. And I love doing that with brushes. So go ahead and do that. It's fun. Okay. And then here's where the real fun comes in. This is the advanced stuff. Dual brush. So what dual brush does is it attempts to take your primary brush, the one that you define here in the brush tip shape area, and it adds to it a whole second brush tip shape with its own settings for sizing, spacing, scatter, and so on. But it only has this kind of mini set of, of, of these right here, size, spacing, scatter, and count. Okay, so um, let's just take a look. If I just use a circle, what it's gonna do is it's gonna try and contain my first brush tip shape inside this second brush tip shape and if I change the size you can see that it like clips it off and tries to contain it in there so you'll get the texture of that first one but inside this circle okay well that starts to get interesting when you combine your tip shape with your other tip shapes right so remember we drew our own tip shape here this best one here almost looks like a little rose well, if we use that as our second tip shape, and then we adjust sort of the size and the settings here, what we can do is we can create infinite variation because we're, we're creating two different brushes and then we're using them both together so that one of them essentially becomes the core and the core texture of the thing. And then the second one becomes essentially, the second one becomes like a, the, the container for the first one. So if I push down softly here, you can see I can scrape along. As I come down harder, I get a bunch of texture, but not only do I get texture, I get a bunch of toothiness, okay? So that's a great thing to do. And then play with the size here. I try to kind of clip some of the edges off. <clears throat> and then also play with the spacing because um, if you space this way out, you know, you're gonna get like dots, right? But if you space it, uh, too close, it might actually have you know too much of the texture from the second one. So you just have to experiment with it. And I just try to get a good feel out of it. And this is looking pretty rad already. So this is a great way to create it, like a scumbly, dirty, messy, sort of a chalky, charcoaly type of brush. Um, and it's really good for again like sketching around and just building up silhouettes and stuff like that. Of course, you can draw with it uh, and paint with it in its own right. But I, I tend to like these brushes for, because they're so messy, I use them to build up a pose with a character I'm working on or something before I have a good idea of what that pose is going to be. It helps me lock down the silhouette. It gives me, me an idea 
like a mannequin to hang my ideas off of. And then when I come up here, I'm going to just do this on a new layer. I'll just drop this down to be really light. And you can see that this almost gives me something like a tracing guide, but it's not cheating because I drew it myself, right? So now I can come in. I've just made a smaller version of the same brush, which kind of looks something like a pencil. And that's the cool thing about these sort of charcoaly brushes at small sizes. They're like charcoal pencils. <clears throat> and then I can, I'm not exactly tracing it, but I am using it as a guide. So now I'm just thinking like, okay, well, what's, what's my anatomy here, you know? Where's my, where would my uh, facial features be? And is this a man or a woman? And, or is it a human or is it another character? And all that stuff. So all that stuff I can kind of plan out here, which is pretty fun. Uh, just using that one brush, I can, you know, uh, I don't feel like what this guy, maybe this is like a samurai. I don't know. That just popped into my head. I don't know why. Um, there we go. I mean, here's, he's got his, and is he bare chested? No, he's going to have like a kimono, right? Okay, good, good, good. All right, so I'm just, this is one way that I like to use this, these types of brushes. You don't have to use it this way. Um, but I, I tend to think that it's really cool to work with like a big silhouette thing. And then that gives you like a really good guide. Because when you're just drawing on white paper, it's super hard to like, oh, where's the anatomy? Whereas if you even have the loosest silhouette, you can just start to see things. Um, and that's really cool. And I think really beneficial. So I don't know if this guy looks like he's kind of holding a sword in this arm because of that lot. So here we go. So here's his katana. Uh, gotta, yeah, there. And then he can, here's his hand on the katana. I can fix that later. Here he's, there we go. This stuff, not too bad for like a rando thing. And then I can think about, you know, what does he have like, what kind of pants does he have? I don't know. Maybe it's some kind of armor, like a layered leather kind of armor or something like that. Shogun. Okay, so anyway, I hope you guys like that. Um, I always like to just kind of point out ways to make uh, brushes because... You know, you can be in the middle of, of a drawing or an illustration and, and just get bored and having something fresh um, to draw with can help you out. It, I mean, at least that helps me out. Tell me if you don't feel that way, uh, but I feel that way. So if that helps you guys out, obviously I'll post this brush uh, that we made in this video down below. You guys can have that, but I do recommend and encourage you to try making your very own brushes um, by following this technique and the ideas uh, that are in some of the other videos on Yansketch. So anyway, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. That was the uh, like a good way to make something like a scumble brush or a charcoal brush. And uh, you could also use it to shade. Check that out. I planned out or silhouetted, drawn, and shaded all with the same brush, just the different sizes. That's kind of cool, right? Okay, so remember, last thing and probably most important because you'll lose this brush if you don't do this, go up to the brush tool presets menu, click on the little gear, and go new tool preset and name your brush tool preset. Okay, and then you can keep all that stuff. Ah, one more thing too. I never include the color because like when I change the color, I don't want it to get switched by my tool preset. But let's just name this really quick. Okay, so this is Yam Sketch. This is my system. You can do whatever system you want. I use arrows just like I'm in a menu. So I go Yam Sketch, brushes. This makes stuff easy to find. And then let's call this, uh, uh, this is kind of a versatile scumbler. So let's call it the, the versus scum. Mm, bull. Good, but minus the K. Versus scumble. Okay. All right. Now, this is important because this has happened to me more than once. I'm sad to admit. Once you have some brushes that you like, go to your preset manager and find those brushes. So you can see I have many, many, many Kyle brush loaded up right now because I also love Kyle brush. There you are. So once you find them, select all the brushes that you want to save and go save set. Okay, super important. Then go to your uh, favorite brush set, scumble brush set, save that, done. 
now in the future if you ever um, need those brushes you just go back here and you go to load tool presets and you find them and there they are boom they'll load up the thing is if you don't do that and like Photoshop crashes or your computer shuts down or like you exit blah blah blah, blah uh, and you come back in uh, you won't have those tool presets unless you save them in an external file which stinks so uh, just save them in an actual file and then every time you want to update it just overwrite that same file and that will save you a lot of a headache as always questions comments yada yada put it down below please i will answer it as best i can and um if you like this and you haven't already consider subscribing that's good